Okay, um, if we are um, taking a spring, and let's look at it horizontally. Um, and the reason for that is because if you have a spring oriented vertically, then anything it pushes is also going to be experiencing a force from gravity, which, um, which can change the overall work done to the object that's getting pushed around. If we put our spring horizontally and imagine that we're on a relatively frictionless surface, then the only force that's going to be acting on something that the spring pushes on is going to be the spring itself. So let's take this spring and let's compress it. And we compress it, we're going to be exerting some sort of pushing force, right? So there's going to be some pushing force here. And, um, and we know that as we push it, the spring is going to compress some distance, right? It's, so it's going to compress some distance. And um, if we think about work, we know that work is force times distance. So we've got something to work with here, but there's a couple of problems, all right? The first problem is um, relatively easy to understand and to follow. And that is that if we were to look at a graph of that pushing force, all right? So here's our force. As the distance squished increased, what we would see is that it starts off really small. Imagine you're, you're pushing on a spring, any kind of a spring, like the spring in a ballpoint pen. At first, it hardly takes any effort at all to squish it. The farther you push it, the more force it takes. So the force that we need to apply to squish this spring isn't always the same. There's some maximum force once we've squished it all the way. And the minimum force is going to be zero or, you know, very close to zero, right? And so if we think about the average force that we're applying to the spring as we push it for this distance, the average force is going to be equal to the maximum force plus the minimum force, which is zero, divided by two. And that's going to be one half times this maximum force. And it turns out that we can use average when we're calculating work. So the work done here to the spring is going to be equal to one half times whatever that maximum force is, which we could measure with a, with a spring scale or a force sensor times the distance that it's compressed. And so let's call that, let's call that X, which is usually what the variable that we use when we're talking about springs. Okay. And um, so, so that's one issue that we need to deal with the fact that the force is changing and this, this allows us to, um, to correct for that. But now we have another issue, which is a, a little bit more subtle. Um, it's easier to deal with, but it's harder to understand. And that is that we just calculated the work done to the spring, right? If I compress a spring, I'm pushing on it and I push over some distance. That's work that I'm doing. But usually when we're dealing with a spring, what we want to know is something about the amount of work that the spring can do. So how do we find that? The work a spring can do and the answer is, if we think about what's happening when we compress the spring in terms of Newton's third law, realize it's going to be the exact same number. If we compress a spring, we're pushing on the spring with a certain force. It's got to be pushing back on us with the exact same force. That's what Newton's law says. So when a spring is pushing, the spring pushing force is equal to whatever the compression force is at any time. So at the very start of a spring's compression, it's pushing with very little force as you push with very little force. Once you've compressed the spring as much as possible, you will um, be experiencing a much larger force. And so will the spring. You're pushing on the spring, it's pushing back on you. That means if we put an object there and release the spring, the amount of force 
that spring is going to be exerting on the object is going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be backwards. So it's going to start out big. It's going to end out at zero. And the average force is still going to be one half the maximum force that uh, the spring was exerting when it was fully compressed. So the work a spring can do is going to be equal to one half times the maximum force of the spring times the compression distance. And um, this is going to give us a number in joules. Work energy always have um, the units of joules. So this is going to give us a number in joules.